Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. After Canada linked Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar's killing to India and suspended an Indian diplomat, India rejected Canada's claim and suspended a Canadian diplomat. India asked Canada to reduce its diplomat strength in India as well. After issuing travel advisory against Canada, India also suspended visa services to Canada. In a retaliatory move, India also started confiscating the properties of known Khalistani terrorists including Gurpatwan Singh Pannu and various others. The five I countries which include UK, US, Australia, New Zealand other than Canada have shown lukewarm reaction to Canada's allegation against India and refused to join Canada to publicly denounce or issue a joint statement on finding of the probe. Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha have given a nod to the Constitution of 128th Amendment Bill seeking to provide one third reservation to reserve one third of the total number of seats in Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies for women. The bill is called as Nari Shakti Vandan Adhiniyam. The bill was passed after division of votes in which 454 MPs favoured in favour of the bill, while two MPs from AIMIM were against it. Later, it was passed by the Rajya Sabha unanimously. On the first day of the proceedings in the new parliament building, Union Law Minister Arjun Ramphal Meghwal introduced the 128th Amendment Bill 2023. Talking about the new parliament building, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi said it reflects the aspirations of 140 crore Indians. Mr Modi said this is the first in a historical session of the new parliament building. The old parliament building will be known as Samvidhan Sadhan. Sacred ensembles of the Hoysala, the group of Hoysala temples in Karnataka have made it to the list of UNESCO World Heritage List. Hoysala architecture was a building style of the Hoysala Empire in the 12th and the 13th centuries. Temples built during this era include Chenna Keshava Temple at Belur and Hoysala Rishwar Temple at Halebidu. Armenian forces have agreed to a Russian proposal for a ceasefire and complete surrender as demanded by Azerbaijan on Wednesday this week. The move comes after Azerbaijan's army launched an offensive operation in Nagorno-Karabakh area to take control of the autonomous region. In a statement, the Azerbaijan's defense minister says its forces have taken control of more than 90 combat strategically important positions in Nagorno and Karabakh. Traces of the rare metal vanadium have been found in the sediment samples collected from the Gulf of Kambat near Alang in Gujarat. The Geological Survey of India GSI, conducted the research on the samples. This is the first report of vanadium occurrence in the offshore sediments of India, a GSI researcher said. Vanadium is mainly used to produce steel alloys. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday launched the PM Vishwakarma scheme for traditional craftsmen and the artisans on occasion of Vishwakarma Jayanti. The scheme will be fully funded by the central government with an outlay of 13,000 crores. The scheme will cover 18 traditional crafts including carpenter, boat makers, blacksmith, potter, sculpture, stone breakers, doll and toy makers amongst the others. The Singapore-India Annual Naval Maritime Bilateral Exercise between the Indian Navy and Republic of Singapore Navy began from 21st till 24th of this month. The SIMBEX enhances interoperability and mutual understanding between the two navies. The exercise is conducted in two phases, the harbour phase and the sea phase. INS Ranvijay, Karavati and Sindhu Kesri long-range maritime petrol aircraft P-81 are participating in the exercise. SIMBEX is the longest naval exercise that Indian Navy has with any other country. 
The central government has introduced a new set of national awards in the field of science, technology and innovation called Rashtriya Vigyan Puraskar. It will be awarded on National Space Day that is on 23rd of August. It will cover four categories Vigyan Ratna, Vigyan Shri, Vigyan Yuva Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar and Vigyan Team across 13 domains like physics, chemistry, biological sciences, atomic energy and others. India's National Medical Commission has been granted the World Federation for Medical Education WFME recognition status for 10 years, Health Ministry said. It enables the Indian medical graduates to practice in other countries with WFME recognition, including US, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. It said India's medical graduates can also pursue post-graduation training in these countries. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan inaugurated the 108-foot-tall Adi Shankaracharya statue in Omkareshwar on Tuesday this week. During the inauguration ceremony, CM Shivraj Chauhan offered prayers at the site. Over 5,000 saints reportedly took part in the inauguration ceremony. The statue named Ekatma Ki Pratima or Statue of Oneness is located on the banks of Narmada River. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar held discussions with his counterparts from Quad countries in New York this week. The minister is in New York, where he is leading the Indian delegation for High Level Week at the 78th session of United Nations General Assembly. He also held meeting with foreign ministers of Japan, Yoko Kamikawa, and exchanged perspectives of special strategic and global partnership between India and Japan. They discuss regional, multilateral and global cooperation and taking them forward. During his five-day visit to New York till 26 September, the External Affairs Minister will attend various plurilateral and bilateral meetings. He will address the high-level sessions of UNGA on 26 September. In the second leg of his US tour, Dr. Jay Shankar will visit Washington DC from 27 to 30 September for bilateral meetings with US interlocutors. The first meeting of One Nation, One Election Committee was held in New Delhi on Saturday this week. On the 2nd of September, the government had notified the eight-member committee headed by former President Ramnath Kovin to examine the issue of simultaneous elections to Lok Sabha and state assemblies. The committee will make recommendations keeping in view the existing framework under the Constitution of India and other statutory provisions. The concept of One Nation, One Election in India aims to synchronize elections of Lok Sabha and all state assemblies. The idea is to hold these elections simultaneously, either on a single day or within a specific time frame. The 19th Asian Games will kick off at Hangzhou in People's Republic of China this Saturday. The grand opening ceremony will take place at the Hangzhou Olympic Sports Complex, known as Big Lotus. India's men's hockey team captain Harmanpreet Singh and ace boxer Lovlina Borgeon will lead the contingent and carry the Indian flag in the opening ceremony. Athletes from 45 countries are set to take part in the 40 sporting events across 61 disciplines. India has sent a 921 strong contingent including 655 athletes and 260 coaches and the support staff. The Indian contingent is to compete in 40 disciplines. This is the country's biggest ever contingent at the Asia. Ukraine carried out missile strikes on the headquarters of Russia's Black Sea Fleet. Images on social media showed smoke coming out from Sevastopol Harbour in the annexed Crimea. The Russian installed government of the Sevastopol, Mikhail Razovozehev, said emergency services have been dispatched to the site of the strike and there was no information about casualty. And now for the segment where we see the events that unfolded itself this week back in history. 17 September 1978, Camp David Accords concluded. The Camp David Accords negotiated by US President Jimmy Carter were completed this day in 1978, leading to peace treaty between Egypt and Israel and a border framework 
for pursuing peace in Middle East. 18 September 1931 Mukden seized by Japanese On this day in 1931, in the so-called Mukden incident, the Japanese army in Manchuria used the pretext of an explosion along its railway to occupy Mukden and then to increase its control within three months to all the Manchuria. 19 September 1796 George Washington's Farewell Address published. In his farewell address printed in a Philadelphian newspaper on this day in 1796, George Washington, the first US president, implored his country to maintain neutrality and avoid entangling alliances with Europe. 20 September 1870 Rome incorporated into Italy. On this day in 1870, Italian troops occupied Rome, leading to the eventual incorporation of Rome into the Kingdom of Italy and the limiting of papal governing authority to the Vatican itself and a small district around it. 21 September 1823 Joseph Smith Vision of Moroni According to the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Moroni was an angel or resurrected being who appeared to Joseph Smith on this day in 1823 and instructed him to restore God's Church on Earth. 22nd September 1980 Solidarity formed Solidarity, the Polish trade union and the political party that became a hotbed of resistance to Soviet control was founded this day in 1980 when delegates from 36 union met and united under the leadership of Lesh Walsh. 23rd September 1846 Neptune observed On this day in 1846, astronomer Johann Gottfried Gale became the first person ever to observe the planet Neptune, the existence of which has been mathematically predicted by Urbane Jean Joseph Lee Verrier and John Couch Adams. Well, that's all friends for this week's updates. See you soon next Sunday on the same channel. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.